Hello, live from the floor of the 2019 Android Dev Summit, and welcome back to today's next session of the Hashtag Ask Android livestream. I'm Dan Galpin, and this is my co-host, Lila Fujiwara. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here at ADS 19, uh, and we are straight in the Android sandbox. There's lots of sand everywhere, you can tell. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> so next up, we've got a topic that I am pretty biased about, and uh, I added to the list. So it is Android community. Uh, we're going to be learning about how to start figuring out your Android journey and how to join the Android community. Remember, if you want your questions answered live, please tweet using the Ask Android hashtag. Uh, with me, we've got Marat and Ben. Now, both Marat and Ben are former former GDEs that have found a home here at Google. Now, Marat formerly led the Istanbul and San Francisco uh, Android Google developer groups, while Ben led the Android Berlin GDJ. Cool. And uh, I think we're going to just get started. So we've been seeing GDE a lot. What exactly <laughs> is a GDE? Uh, how did you become a GDE? Should anybody else decide to be GDEs? Like, what's up with that? <laughs> uh, if you are starting, let me put my head on. OK. Oh, there we go. All right, excellent. <laughs> now, I'm now, now, now you're in costume. You're, th you're thinking, Cap. wardrobe is done. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, so GDE is uh, one of the TLAs we have at, G at Google. It's a three-letter <laughs> acronym, yes. and it stands for Google Developer Expert. So uh, Google Developer Experts are people within the Android community that have stood out over time with their exemplary uh, contributions towards that community by providing the community with resources that is far above and beyond what we provide as um, documentation and the videos that we create out there with real world experience with real apps. And they really give back to the community. Yeah, and help, help, help to foster and create that community, yeah. I think it's really the key thing. You know, and it's, it's I think wonderful. as Dan mentioned, you were both GDs before joining Google. How did you get involved with the program? So <laughs> this goes way back for me. <laughs> if, if it's OK, I'm just going to start on this. So um, in Berlin, uh, I was studying there. And the community was really non-existent. Mm -hmm. And the first couple of Android phones came out. And I got one of those phones. I stumbled across a community meetup. I went to that meetup, and over time, that meetup continued to grow. And I started speaking at these meetups. Um, uh, back then, there wasn't a GDG. It was, uh, we called it Stammtisch, which is basically round table. Uh, we just sat there, and we talked about things related to Android development. And at some point, I started presenting my own things that I learned and uh, continued doing that over time. And I started sharing uh, code that I wrote. And um, I got invited to conferences over time. So people asked, do you want to come to this conference? And at one point, um, I was asked to apply to become a Google developer expert, which I then did. Um, there were a couple of uh, people that I met with that. And then I got the, uh, the, lay the tag of being a Google developer expert. Well, I remember meeting you early on when you were working on uh, Blink and Droid, which is oh, a yeah. very, very cool app that allows you to, to synchronize a whole bunch of phones' displays together for these really, really cool. Uh, and it was it was just awesome the work you were doing. So I think it was it was clear how you ended up getting noticed, you know, just 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 by that uh, it, itself. And yeah, I, I also have a similar story. Uh, I was actually in Istanbul uh, again, gathering meetings, mm -hmm. and things started growing, and I started traveling, doing talks at different GDGs. And then one day, I, uh, I applied to become a GD. And uh, the rest is history. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, so both these guys have basically done the entire journey from you know starting to get involved in the community to uh, sort of leading it to some extent. I mean, you're yeah. leading the GDEs right now, which is pretty cool. OK, so listener question, uh, maybe this guy? This one? Yeah, sure. So, so one of them is uh, uh, Mohammed 04469569 asks, should I start my Android development journey with Kotlin and totally ignore Java? Well, definitely Kotlin. Uh, we are going Kotlin first. So Kotlin is a good place to start. We have updated trainings, code mm -hmm. labs. Um, if Java is OK and you can do what you want to do with Java, it's perfectly fine. We support Java. You can write Java. And uh, if that's enough for you, that's fine. But uh, as things progress, Kotlin is a good place to look at and catch up new features. Yeah. Any thoughts on this one? Or? So I, I, I have written Android applications in Java programming language for a long time. And when we announced support of Kotlin on Android, um, I started, write, started rewriting one of the samples app, sample apps that I wrote uh, in Kotlin. And the amount of fun 
that you have with that. <laughs> yes, that pun is not intended, but it's still, it still provides itself. Functions are, are called fun in Kotlin. Just uh, <laughs> and the productivity that I have with that, uh, comparing it to, to Java program language, I'm just so much more happy with that. Mm. So um, if you have the choice to go with either one of the languages, I personally uh, would go Kotlin straight away. Yeah, and this isn't like this isn't like an official Google rec recommendation, uh, but you know, I, I think honestly, I, I feel the same way. Like, you know, it's, so I plus you don't need semicolons. Yeah, so the the uh, phrase Kotlin first was mentioned, and I think that what that means, at least from our perspective, is a lot of the samples and documentation that we're doing is you know we're writing it in Kotlin first. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not to say it's not in Java, but if you want the freshest material, and we Kotlin. we also keep Kotlin in mind whenever we're designing yep. our things. Yeah. All right, cool. So next question. Um, so uh, Adil KR, oh, a lot of numbers here, 0306 asks, why is there no, no tutorial on Dagger 2 on the Android developers page? Uh, this was asked a few, like, a week ago or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So, so uh, well, the good news is a couple of days ago, we made a push on, uh, on our developer site. So now you can see dependency injection a tutorial that a colleague of ours wrote. Uh, yeah. It's a very good and long tutorial. It goes very in depth. We also um, provi provide all this. So you go on developers.android.com and search for dependency injection, and you will find all the, all the answers to this question. Yeah. yeah. Sort of, yeah, I don't. I was going to, he's technically right. That the Neil said, it, is, it is not actually on the and on the Android developer site, it's technically on our Code Lab site. So, um, but you definitely can find it. Yeah. So, so it's you, code, lot, code, code Labs. labs yeah. Yeah. Developers There's also doc, uh, documentation coming out about uh, dependency injection, and I think it also does mention yes. uh, Dagger 2. Uh, we also have an advanced Android course that includes uh, modules about testing uh, that get into dependency injection. Uh, it's not uh, Dagger 2 material, but it leads uh, great into the Code Lab uh, about Dagger 2. So. Uh, <laughs> Plenty of Dagger 2 testing material um, if you're getting started with Android and you want to start with DI and testing. All right, so, so Brett Whitney 11 asks, what is the best way to start learning how to write programs and on Kotlin and you know programming in general? Since you've been doing a lot of work on that. Yeah, we have lots of trainings and we recently launched a new one. Um, we also have lots of code labs, documentation. Mm -hmm. uh, take a look and uh, we also have the Kotlin Bootcamp. Uh, training. So, uh, good. Uh, another thing that I would like to add to that is uh, what helped me grow a lot is um, a lot of the communities that are out there. They run study jams mm -hmm. and things like that. So that means that people in the community come together and do these courses and uh, these code labs together as a group mm -hmm. and go above and beyond and advance on their own um, in their own time and doing th those things and learn together and share their experience afterwards. So it's a really good point to also come together to community, as a community to grow on this. Yeah, and there are GDGs everywhere. So uh, go take a look. There's probably a GDG nearby, yes. attend okay. one. And yeah, and I think yeah. that uh, we, so sort of bouncing off of that, I don't know yeah. if you mentioned the Kotlin Everywhere campaign that is currently mm -hmm. going on. Uh, that is specifically uh, for GDG groups. That stands for Google Developer Group, uh, mm -hmm. where you get together and you're specifically learning about um, Kotlin topics. Yeah, it's another TLA. No. Yeah, it's another TLA. <laughs> there's GDG, GDG, GDEs. If you, do, if you have GD, there's probably another letter after oh. it that means something. And GDGs are amazing because you can find every level of people and. There will yeah. be someone who can so, help so speaking, you. Do you want to ask this yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, totally. So we just got a question from the YouTube live stream from uh, Kwaku, which is, how do I join a GDG community in Ghana? We, we actually have one in Accra, right? right? Awesome. Yeah. yeah so so, so <laughs> if you live in Accra, so, then so I actually was watching Dan as he was uh, looking up how to answer this question. So how how does how do our viewers at home answer this question? Uh, so. Firstly, well, look it up on uh, um, the on the uh, GDG site. So you yeah. go on Google and you search for Google Developer Groups, and there's a site that leads you uh, that shows you a map with all the local communities yeah. that are there. Uh, and usually, those they have meetups every so and so often, mm -hmm. and you can join one of those meetups, or you can also uh, find them on Twitter, for example, and ask them when the next meetup is if it's not scheduled already. Mm -hmm. And if there is no community around you, um, the best place to start is literally just. Put yourself out there mm -hmm. and sit together with a couple of people, talk about it, and do that more and more frequently. Yeah. Now, in this, in the particular case of Accra, there actually is a uh, there is a meetup hey, page where you join awesome. the group. Awesome. Do, so do they have a meetup coming up? They do. Uh, I don't know. That's good. That's well, a different question. Maybe, <laughs> looks maybe like in a it. second we'll be able to answer that question. There was an event um, in, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, so it looks okay. like it's active. It's active. 
Um, so, yeah, I, I guess one of the questions I was going to ask is you guys, uh, you've definitely been involved in, G you both have been involved in GDG groups. Yes. So uh, maybe a little above and beyond, but um, did you start your GDG groups or did you uh, join on? Um, I did not start it, but mm -hmm. I made it after a while. I converted it to be a GDG. Okay. So it was a community before. There were a couple of people that sat there before and started doing it. And I, t I took it over and we then converted it to being a GDG. So, yeah, I mean, if you have a group of community members who are like, hey, we're already kind of yeah. doing GDG yeah. type stuff, how do you then turn it into a GDG group? So, um, you probably have the, the best answer on this since you did this from the get go. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you're starting, and uh, actually, if you don't have a GDG around, you can easily start one. And it's not actually really, really that complicated. How I started one was I was actually coming here in Bay Area to attend Google I.O. And I attended a GDG event be, uh, a week before mm -hmm. Google I.O. And at the time, it was called GTAC, actually, Google Technology User Group. Mm -hmm. Which is FLA uh, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and uh, then uh, a week after, I saw the same guys in uh, uh, Google I.O. And they all remembered me. I was like, that was really touching. They remember me. And they even remember what I was talking about. And you didn't even have a hat back then, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't that recognizable, I guess. <laughs> then I went back, and I really wanted to have something like that, but there was no real community or any uh, user group event. I gathered a few people. We started meeting at coffee shops. Then uh, more people started show showing up. Uh, my company is sponsored to have a small room, uh, which was really uh, not much. Again, mm -hmm. uh, we didn't really. Uh, need much resources, but then we started meeting there, and things grew uh, large enough to hold deaths over thousands of people. Mm -hmm. And again, it basically happened on its own. I didn't do something a lot on my own. People started showing up. People stepped in organizing stuff. Mm -hmm. So. Don't be shy. Go ahead, and people will come next to you. So, yeah, so from, from, yeah. from nothing, I was going to say, how, how, how big is the Dev Fest this year and in, in, in projected to be in Istanbul? Uh, this year, I'm, I guess they're expecting over 1,500 people. Wow. Oh. So that, that's, that's amazing. That's, which is much, crazy. Yeah. I mean, 1,500 <laughs> people. Yeah. Even the registration is like. <laughs> Yeah, that's so, crazy. I guess besides uh, you know being put on the GDG website as an official GDG group, what do you get from becoming a sort of official GDG group? What I always suggest was um, um, go and do an event. You don't need to be called an official GDG. Mm -hmm. If you want to do it, start your own and uh, then contact Google or uh, maybe Google uh, people contact will you find you because yeah. we have regional leads everywhere. And um, the main thing is do something sustainable. Don't try to organize an event for 100 people, mm -hmm. then run out of resources and stop doing it. But mm -hmm. start slow, small, and. Yeah, coffee uh, shops are great. People love coffee. Yeah, yeah. So. And, and the thing about community is, is um, it's people that do things that matter to them. So every mm -hmm. community can be different. Where an Istanbul community uh, comes together with a Deaf Fest with over 1,500 people, which is amazing. Uh, your community might be small, but uh, this, this number of people usually is driven by the people that are in the area that you, that you are in. So if you have two or three people that come together regularly, and I think that is the most important bit. That's what I saw in Berlin. We come together and still do every last Wednesday of the month. And when, I'm, when, when uh, the, this conference here is done next week, I'll be in Berlin as well to speak at, that, uh, the, at the event there, because it's, it's awesome to, to do that as well. Um, it's still every last Wednesday of that month. And I think having one specific set time makes it easier for community, community members to show up and do their things. And over time, people will then, like Murat said, show up and create their own content, provide it there, because they feel like they want to give back to that community. Cool. So at, uh, at the keynote today, there was some talk about the Kotlin GD program, I think. Can you set some, shed some light into that? Uh, sure. So uh, we did have GDEs for Kotlin for a while now. Mm -hmm. um, but that was quite tightly coupled to being an Android GDE in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, but our investment in Kotlin is growing. And so we decided to decouple that from Android as a category. So people that are not Android GDEs can now apply to become a Kotlin GDE. Mm -hmm. So uh, for example, that might be interesting for people that work on the web or right. in cloud and don't do anything with, uh, with, with Android in the first place. Yeah, I mean, there's no, there's no reason why Kotlin is only useful on Android. That's totally true. So. 
And we've seen people do that, uh, share mm -hmm. a lot of great content in, on Twitter, for example, mm -hmm. um, that are uh, very invested in Kotlin as a language and in the, in the things that you can do with a language, but not necessarily as Android. And mm -hmm. we wanted to make sure that we also um, give those people the possibility to get the recognition from, from us in their case. Great. OK, we have a question right. live coming in right now. <laughs> okay, so, uh, and it's uh, something that I did actually want to talk about. So, uh, Ollie asks, uh, are there any new courses in Udacity for Android? <laughs> or not, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> um, last I.O., we uh, released a, a fundamental Android course, and uh, just uh, today, with this event, we uh, released the advanced version. So, we have a new Udacity course, which uh, talks more about uh, uh, advanced topics we wanted to cover. What, what uh, kind of topics? <laughs> oh, there is a bunch of. Uh, it starts with notifications, maps, testing. Uh, mm -hmm. What else? Animation. Uh, animations. Yeah. Login. I say login. Yeah. Yeah. yeah login is uh, so also. So like doing conditional login. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's. Uh, there is Firebase cloud messaging. Yeah. yeah. And if you're uh, not familiar with Udacity, it's an online uh, learning platform with videos and interactive quizzes and things. So uh, you should be able to see that live soon. And, and we also have code <laughs> It's completely free, by the yeah, way. <laughs> and we also have code labs up for most of those topics as well. So you can, you can either learn through video, or if you'd rather learn through you know, kind of traditional web learning, you can also do that as well. Or you can come together within your community and do those courses together. Yep. Yeah, and it's actually a really great thing. As a, and because you, 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 you both of you have done that, right? Had, have done yeah, that's labs. actually how Study Jam started. We mm -hmm. basically take some content. And it was really amazing, because uh, although Google provides some content, mm -hmm. some GDGs decided to use their own content. So they either <laughs> pick other code labs or write their own apps and uh, work on it. Yeah. So they're like full boot camp-esque yeah. almost training courses. Yeah. Well, and I think that's one of the things when you're doing kind of uh, learning on your own, it's really hard to keep yourself motivated. But you have a whole community around you, you know, that that all of a sudden you get more excited about, about doing and learning and suddenly you're working at Google as <laughs> so these things happen. Okay, so uh, Moe Din asks, is the course in Kotlin? Yes, uh, yeah. Kotlin first, it is uh, all in Kotlin. Yeah, we, we actually have an advanced Android app that was that was written uh, that was that was written in the Java programming language, and so this is a full update and a really very very substantial uh, update to the app. That used, it's also taking advantage of our, all of our latest patterns. All right, awesome. Okay, so um, I am going to go to actually, Dan, do you want to ask this next one or pick the next one? Sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. So um, it's an interesting question. Uh, what this this comes from. Um, uh, Big Yan four four two four. You know, what are the most common anti patterns in Android application development? <laughs> Not following our guidelines. <laughs> <laughs> Not following what Ben says. Well, it's not just me. It's a lot of people that yeah. uh, create content. We spend a lot of our time to make sure that we uh, do stuff in a way that it's beneficial to you as a community, and it's beneficial that uh, you we, we try and fall into pitfalls so you don't have to. Mm -hmm. And we created, for example, the uh, Android Blueprints, uh, mm -hmm. which is a set of which is a repository with a set of samples that provides you with architectural guidance. For example, we do have the Udacity courses. We do have a lot of these things. Another thing is uh, as an anti pattern is getting stuck in one way just because you have done it like this, you will always do it like that. Mm -hmm. So um, I know that we put out a lot of content in very quick succession sometimes, but um, that doesn't mean that you have to follow everything on that end. But um, don't get stuck with one API because you have done it like that. Make sure that you expand your horizons. Yeah, and I think if you look at blueprints, is what's great about it is that it's not just a single pattern. It actually shows a whole bunch of patterns. Well, I guess that's it. We were out of time. <laughs> uh, so we're, that's going to be going to be the last word. Thank you both to Murat and to Ben for joining us. Uh, and just as a sort of repeat, you can look up uh, GDG groups on the GDG website. Mm -hmm. uh, GDE program, uh, I also believe, has a website we out there. A website there. Uh, we mentioned Code Labs, uh, which are uh, online training tutorials, uh, Udacity courses, the new advanced Android launched. Uh, anything training-wise I'm missing? That sounds, that sounds pretty good. All right, yeah. So we hope that you take this as inspiration to get involved uh, in your local community. Uh, we're going to take a short break right now from Ask Android, but we will be back at 510 PDT uh, to talk to Chris Baines and Fred Chung about Android 10. Uh, as always, we are actually taking your questions live, uh, so just use the Ask Android hashtag for a chance to see them answered right here. Uh, so next up, you're going to learn about the Android X WebKit library.